Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode uh, of this new series on Islam and atheism. Uh, last time, we discussed in one of our videos, at least, uh, a, a moral issue related to Muhammad and marriage. And previously, also, we talked about other, uh, uh, basically, moral issues between Muhammad and woman in general. Today is no exception, actually. Uh, it will still be dealing with Muhammad, his moral actions as it relates to women. And with me here in studio to unpack this uh, next example is our dear brother, David Wood. And I'm going to let him basically share that example with us. Mm -hmm. David, welcome back. Yep. What example do we have today? Well, we have the greatest example of all. Muhammad. You mean greater than everything we've we no, discussed Muhammad, so Muhammad far. is the great example of, 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 of conduct for Muslims, according to Surah 33, verse 21 of the Quran. Right. Um, and uh, lots of stuff in Surah 33. So Surah 33, verse 21, that's where, uh, that's where uh, Allah says that Muhammad is a pat pattern of conduct for, uh, for Muslim men. But, you know, this is also the same, this is also the same chapter where we have uh, Muhammad and uh, Zainab and Allah justifying uh, Muhammad taking the wife of his own adopted son. And a verse that we're going to read now, Surah 33, verse 50, which allows Muhammad, this is the justification for Muhammad um, violating the four wife limit. So uh, he had revealed, uh, Allah had revealed in Surah 4, verse 3 of the Quran that men can marry up to four wives. So you can marry one or two or three or four. Um, but Muhammad, we know, had at least nine wives at one time. Right. And so why did Muhammad get to have more? Well, Muslims will point to Surah 33, verse 50, and say that this is what justifies Muhammad in having more because Allah just says, you know, he can marry um, whom, whomever he wants here. Uh, but we're going to focus on something else, namely that um, Muhammad also would was allowed to have sex with his slave girls like, like other Muslims were. All right, so Surah 33, verse 50 of the Quran. O Prophet, Surely we have made lawful to you. So this is talking about lawful for sex. So halal sex here. O prophet, surely we have made lawful to you your wives whom you have given their dowries and those whom your right hand possesses out of those whom Allah has given you as prisoners of war. So women you've captured in battle, you have a right to have sex with them as well. And we will unpack some of that mm -hmm. right now and the daughters of your paternal uncles and the daughters of your paternal aunts and the daughters of your maternal uncles and the daughters of your maternal aunts who fled with you. And a believing woman, if she gave herself to the prophet, if the prophet desired to marry her, specially for you, not the rest of believers. Um, now notice uh, this specially for you, not for the rest of believers. That's the part where supposedly Muhammad, since Allah is saying, hey, you can, you can marry all these women if they come up to you and you know, they're, they're, they're willing to marry you and you find them attractive, uh, you get to marry them. Well, why, why wouldn't other people be allowed to marry them? So the, the, the idea is this is talking about just, you can just keep marrying women. Here. And I thought he's the pattern. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's yeah. the model, you know, for... Huh. Confusing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. According to this chapter, he's the pattern, and yet, yeah. but this is just for you, not for the, not for everyone else, especially for you, not for the rest of believers. We know what we have ordained for them concerning their wives. So, talking about other Muslims here, we know what we have ordained for them concerning their wives and those whom their right hands possess, in order that no blame may attach to you, and Allah is forgiving, merciful. So, other Muslims are allowed to have wives and sex slaves, but Muhammad is just allowed to have. Uh, more wives than other people. So Muhammad, like other Muslims, is allowed to have uh, sex slaves like uh, that, that are captured in battle, uh, but basically th those whom your right hands possess. So. And I want to emphasize something, David, and you can uh, uh, capitalize on that as well. These women could have been married yep. when they captured them. Yeah, we're going to be talking about that yeah. in a later video where we talk yeah. specific, where we focus on um, taking sex captives and stuff like that. Uh, here, it's Muhammad has, if, if Basically, those whom your right hands possess, it, it applies to two categories. Slave girls, you might just buy a slave girl. You don't have to capture her in battle. But uh, you can, uh, you can, you, you know, if you if buy a slave or someone gives you a slave girl, um, or if you capture a woman in battle, either way, they're those whom your right hand possesses. And they are, uh, they're lawful for Muhammad or for Muslims to have sex with. And so we're going to go ahead and read a passage about one specific example of a woman that was Muhammad's slave girl, and he 
certainly had fun with her. So this is Sunan An-Nasai, 3411. It was narrated from Anas that the messenger of Allah had a female slave with whom he had intercourse, but Aisha and Hafsa would not leave him alone until he said that she was forbidden for him. Then Allah, the mighty and sublime, revealed, O Prophet, why do you forbid for yourself that which Allah has allowed to you until the end of the verse? So Muhammad had a slave girl who was given to him. Um, he was having sex with her, and uh, his, 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 his other wives kept complaining that, hey, you've got all these wives. Why are you having sex with your slave girl? Until he said, hey, no, she's, she's fine. I won't, I'll stop having sex with her. She's forbidden to me. That's when Allah stepped in and said, no, 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 Muhammad. I didn't say that she's forbidden to you. So you go ahead and, and uh, continue having sex with your slave girl. He eventually got her, got her pregnant, and, and she had a, a son of Muhammad who, who died in, in early childhood named uh, Ibrahim. Right. So, um, but, but here's the thing, right? This is a, a moral issue for uh, Muslims because since this man is being put forward as the pattern of conduct for all mankind, and since this is a man who would gladly take a female captive, someone who, who, who was captured in war, take her back to his tent and have sex with her, even though, I mean, her, her family may have just been killed or her husband may still be alive. Muhammad had no problem taking her back to his own tent, having sex with her. Or if someone says, hey, here, I'm gonna give you a present. Here's a slave girl for you to have sex with. Muhammad had no problem. Oh, cool, I'm taking her right to, right to bed. Muhammad had no problem with this. Now, it's kind of funny, brother. We use this exact verse as an example Muhammad used to justify to his soldiers the muta marriage as well. Mm -hmm. He used that verse to say, hey, it's allowed for you to have muta marriage, or in this case, taken slave woman probably in the war mm -hmm. as a spoil and sleep yep. with them. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Allah, has, Allah has, allowed this, uh, has allowed these things for Muslims. But uh, here's the thing. Um, most people today do, do not think that it's okay, it's morally acceptable to you know, go take a captive from war, right? Like, like, I'm just, can you imagine, can you imagine U.S. soldiers in some place like Iraq or something like that, they go over there, they uh, capture a town, and then they think they can just take all the women and take them and, and take them back to their, 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 their tents or barracks or whatever and, and rape them. We'd be so horrified at that. They, 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 would, be, they, would, be, they would be, they would be court-martialed, they would be put in jail. Right? Of course, as, as they should. Those are considered human rights violations. And yet, the pattern of conduct for all mankind, the one who has Allah's stamp of approval as the pattern of conduct that we should all be imitating, did exactly what we just said we would all, we would all condemn. Right? Um, so Muhammad did things and encouraged his followers to do things that would be war crimes right now. These would be, these would be international war crimes if you did them today. So the question that, that, that we have for Muslims is, well, one, how, how do you reconcile this with your belief that Muhammad is the perfect pattern of conduct? But interestingly, for Muslims who see this as a problem, they come to see this as a problem and go, wow, this is a guy I believe is the greatest moral example ever. And no, I, I, I would have a big problem with someone, you know, taking a w woman captive just because he took over the area and then he gets to go and, and rape her and then sell her at the next town. It's funny because, you know, lots of Muslims will, will look at this passage and then they'll just make stuff up, right? They'll say, oh, no, no, but they were, they were marrying these women and so on. That, that's absolute nonsense. We read, we read more details in Ibn Asak. They would capture the women, have sex with them, and then sell them at the next town, trade the women for, for, for uh, weapons. So they're just making, they're just making things up when they're exactly. talking about you know, being, exactly. being married. It's a trade, so. you know, for them. It's all about uh, just possessions. That's it. Mm -hmm. And it says what your right hand possessed. Yeah. So this is, your, this is your belonging. So um, for atheists, I mean, for Muslims who become atheists, they, they, they look at this and they see, wow, my religious leaders convinced me all my life to regard Muhammad as the pattern of conduct, as the greatest man. And this is the sort of thing he's doing. He's doing, he's doing, he, he's doing things that we would recognize as war crimes now, things that would get him, uh, get him and all his, all his soldiers um, thrown in jail for the rest of their lives. That's what he's doing. This is the guy I'm following and they leave Islam. Uh, but as we keep pointing out, many of the, many of these Muslims, uh, after they leave Islam become atheists and they think that they're just getting away from all of these problems. You see, I had all these problems with reconciling this behavior 
when I was a Muslim, but now that I'm an atheist, I no longer have this problem. Wrong, you don't have the same problem, but you have a related problem. The new problem that arises is, why is it really wrong and immoral for a man to have sex with a slave girl? We understand that the atheist believes that it's wrong. The question is, what's the foundation for that belief? We've, the, the bottom line is we've just kind of been raised in a world where we view that as immoral. Well, guess what? There were, other, there were other times in other cultures where that wasn't viewed as immoral. So who's to say which culture is right and which culture is wrong? It was perfectly normal in Muhammad's time. He was doing it. So right. who's to say who's right and who's wrong here? Well, if one culture says it's fine and one culture says it's not, then if the atheist wants to, if the atheist wants to say, yeah, um, you know, I, I don't, I personally don't prefer it. I think it's, you know, I think it's, 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 it's distasteful from my perspective, but if someone else's culture says it's okay, then that's, that's fine. Um, if that's the perspective, on what serious basis are you, are you condemning Muhammad? You have no basis if you're, if you're a exactly. relativist, if it's, if it's different culture to culture. All you can say is you don't like it. Uh, but your, your average atheist is completely willing to condemn it and say, no, I don't care if, it, I don't care if this was the seventh century. You don't do that. You shouldn't have done it. It was immoral, it was immoral behavior, but when they do that, then we see that the atheist himself has a problem because there's no foundation or basis given atheism for condemning that sort of behavior. I mean, as an atheist, what, what do you have? You have your feelings, uh, you have your, your society and your culture. None of those things provide a basis for saying that something is uh, genuinely immoral, not just from your perspective, not just on your feelings, but immoral for anyone and no one should ever do these things. Atheism has no framework for saying that. You need another framework for saying something like that. You need something else saying that there is an absolute moral standard and that human beings have a certain intrinsic worth and in certain, uh, a certain intrinsic dignity that should not be violated. That because of this intrinsic worth that they have and this intrinsic value that they have, they have rights that shouldn't be violated. You need something like that. Atheism doesn't have that. Exactly. Theism does. And that's why our atheist friends need to reconsider their atheism. Absolutely. And I hope these uh, simplified arguments are making sense to you. We're trying really not to get uh, deep into in the woods. Uh, David Wood, no <laughs> pun intended here, uh, is definitely one of those qualified uh, people to talk about atheism. And, uh, you know, obviously we want to be fair also. Uh, the, the intent behind this entire series, not just to talk about atheism, but talk about ex-Muslims who are claiming to become atheists. Well, I mean, I'll take their claim seriously. I'm not uh, denying that that's in their mind. That's what they're thinking. But we're exploring some of the reasons why they're leaving. And one of the probably top, uh, I would say, one, two or three reasons why they have decided to make that shift from this Islamic worldview into uh, atheism worldview is the fact that they're troubled by the moral behavior of Muhammad, as they should, of course. Uh, but we're saying here, what we're saying is that we have an alternative. There is an alternative out there, and it's not atheism. So thank you again for joining us, and uh, can't wait, of course, for the next um, uh, example that we will be exploring here mm -hmm. together. Thank you, brother, mm -hmm. and thank you, everybody. God bless. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. We can't make these quality videos without the help of partners like you. So please consider becoming a Patreon supporter today at patreon.com forward slash Sierra International. I want to make sure you always get notified when we release a new video. So please click the bell to be notified. And of course, make sure to subscribe to this channel. If this video was helpful to you, please click the thumbs up. Thank you.